Russell Brand sheds light on the Freedom Convoy and its media coverage, emphasizing the disdain for ordinary working people within media narratives. He points out a consistent effort to legitimize condemnation of these individuals, labeling them as racist or ignorant. Brand highlights the crucial role of independent media and social platforms in exposing government actions, such as freezing bank accounts and using emergency acts against protesters. The story questions the actions of governments projecting liberal aesthetics while exhibiting authoritarian behaviors. Don't miss, how can the frozen bank accounts of the protesters be addressed and rectified? Is there compensation for individuals who face jail time due to the emergency measures? Should Trudeau continue to govern despite the actions taken against the protesters and potential illegality? One theme, whether it's uh, in the United States of America and the anti-MAGA rhetoric continually in the media, the condemnation of agricultural movements, or indeed the story we're discussing now, the trucker movement, what becomes clear is there is a disdain at the level of media for ordinary working people. There is a disdain at the level of media for ordinary working people. The common perception that mainstream media often portrays the labor force negatively. It emphasizes the importance of recognizing the value of each person's dignity and contribution, regardless of their socioeconomic status. And there is an ongoing effort and appetite to leverage ideas that legitimize the condemnation of ordinary working people. They're racist, they're disgusting, they're stupid, they shouldn't have rights. Ideas that legitimize the condemnation of ordinary working people. They're racist, they're disgusting, they're stupid, they shouldn't have rights. Advocating for the rights and respect of all people, regardless of their backgrounds, involves confronting biases and stereotypes that unfairly label regular workers. That Emergency Act was literally, we don't care about their rights, we should be able to bypass their rights, when in fact what they were doing was protesting quite unreasonable government activity that looks more and more unreasonable the more we learn about vaccine efficacy, the more we learn about the efficacy of lockdown, the more we learn about the financial relationships between the state and pharmaceutical organizations. The more we learn about vaccine efficacy, the more we learn about the efficacy of lockdown, the more we learn about the financial relationships between the state and pharmaceutical organizations, the level of trust and transparency in governmental decisions, especially concerning medical and pharmaceutical affairs. It probes whether the government supervision of the medical system fosters corruption rather than advancement, and if it prioritizes government interests over public welfare. The more we learn about the laws and indemnity that was granted to these organizations, the truckers, it seems, were right. The media were wrong. The government were wrong. Without the scrutiny of independent media, these kind of stories would just sort of fizzle out. Without the ability to use social media to organize, the truckers would not be able to mount that protest. Without the independent media and social media, knowledge of the frozen bank accounts would not have risen to the point where enough people were disgusted and aware. Knowledge of the frozen bank accounts would not have risen to the point where enough people were disgusted and aware. Autonomous media and social platforms play a crucial role in spreading information and raising public awareness. Alternative channels are vital for sharing knowledge and diverse perspectives, empowering the press. But even if they sort of like politicians like Justin Trudeau and their cute socks and their lovely hair and their love of dressing up, should we call it? I deeply, deeply regret. It seems that there are questions to be asked of governments that have the aesthetic of liberalism, kindness, compassion, progressivism. Questions to be asked of governments that have the aesthetic of liberalism, kindness, compassion, progressivism, but the actions of authoritarianism. The importance of scrutinizing government actions to ensure alignment with their public image. Despite appearing liberal and progressive, governments often deflect accountability, leading to skepticism about their intentions. But the actions of authoritarianism, this is a defining story of our time. What's interesting as well in part of his judgment is he talks about how if he had been at the table, you know, making the decisions, that he does recognize that hindsight is 2020, mm -hmm. uh, and that in the moment, uh, he may have even been persuaded uh, that this was necessary. Seems like that judge is trying to offer as much mitigation as possible. Anyone could make the mistake of freezing bank accounts and throwing pastors into jail and all of that. I might have even done it myself. But the fact is, when you actually look at what's written down in our charter, it was illegal, presumably, so as not to have masses of people over Canada right now going, wait a minute, we were protesting, we were within our rights to protest, and they froze our bank accounts through people in jail evoking emergency act and we're not getting sufficient recompense we were protesting we were within our rights to protest and they froze our bank accounts threw people in jail evoking an emergency act and we're not getting sufficient recompense the importance of advocating for fair compensation defending the right to peaceful protests and seeking justice for perceived wrongs during protests 
It also points out that in left-leaning governments, there is often an unchecked and deceitful exercise of authority. What now? What should happen as a result of this? Do the people get their bank accounts unfrozen? Are they compensated in some way? What about the people that have done jail time as a result of those measures? And what about Trudeau himself? Is he allowed to continue to govern, given he's a person who reaches for an emergency act with the enthusiasm he reaches for the shoe polish on party night? Brand's insights reveal a broader pattern of media bias against ordinary citizens engaging in protests urging the public to question the narrative presented by mainstream outlets, the significance of independent media and social platforms in uncovering governmental actions is underscored. The public is encouraged to critically assess the actions of governments, even those projecting a liberal image, and to demand accountability for measures like frozen bank accounts and arrests during protests. The story prompts reflection on the consequences for those affected and raises questions about the governance of leaders like Justin Trudeau. Examining the narratives, linguistic nuances, and framing employed by media outlets seemingly disdainful of the common workforce unveils foundational attitudes and potential repercussions on public perception and self-team. Russell Brand characterizes ordinary workers as embodying traits such as racism, repulsiveness, and absurdity. This implies a recurrent pattern of utilizing ideas to critique them, encompassing the psychological ramifications of such depictions, such as social division, anger, and the conceivable erosion of empathy. A critical understanding of the influence wielded by independent media in shaping trust, skepticism, and awareness is paramount. This extends to how the public processes information pertaining to vaccine efficacy, lockdown measures, and government-industrial relationship. A meticulous examination of the public's response to both commercial and governmental actions provides insights into the psychological significance of independent and social media in molding public awareness and mobilization. This encompasses the role platforms play in information dissemination, protest organization, and the generation of public narratives, elucidating the psychology underpinning modern activism. Russell Brand astutely highlights the dissonance between the visual portrayal of liberalism, kindness, and progressivism projected by the government and their actual authoritarian undertakings. This dissonance significantly impacts public trust, fostering disillusionment and shaping perceptions of political leaders. Comprehending the essence of the narrative defining our era is imperative. Does it challenge prevailing power structures, resonate with the public, and contribute to a shift in social consciousness? Russell Brand advocates for seeking justice, compensation, and accountability in the context of government over-intervention. This involves questioning compensation for affected individuals, holding those responsible accountable, and considering potential consequences for figures like Justin Trudeau. What do you think? I promote myself and my videos. Hello, I'm Bong Sim, a Canadian resident of Asian descent. During the day, I work as a professional counselor, and at night, I do Uber food delivery. Instead of speaking in my videos, I prefer to express myself through writing. In today's world, speaking the truth can have serious consequences, both for my professional life and personal well-being. That's why I'm choosing to pen down my thoughts and using a platform to share them on my behalf. Some people find my videos uninteresting, too strict, and they even criticize the appearance of the individuals featured including their tiredness, Asian, or perceived flaws. I understand these concerns, but I genuinely believe in the purpose behind creating these videos. Unfortunately, recent Canadian legislation has resulted in the censorship of free speech and online content. And although Google hasn't explicitly admitted their involvement, I suspect they play a part in it. Despite my efforts to monetize my content on YouTube, I haven't been able to earn any income from it. I've tried three times, and all my attempts were rejected. They turned me down for reasons like lacking creativity, not having a recognizable face, or not having a distinct voice. Nevertheless, I've made several adjustments to my videos, hoping to overcome these challenges. If you share my belief and support what I'm doing, I would genuinely appreciate your backing.